Today on the Audio Hotline, we're going to be taking a look at the Fifine K669D. Great name. We all know what the D stands for in the name, right? <laughs> stands for dynamic because this is a dynamic microphone. And in fact, this is a $37 XLR dynamic microphone. $37. That is wild. But I do want to mention, when there's a microphone that I think could be really good for people that want to start out, that's exciting to me. It's one more thing that I could recommend to potentially have someone fall in love with audio. And I do just want to give credit where credit is due. Bark from Obscure Mics reviewed this microphone. I watched that review, clicked the little affiliate link, purchased it. So this review is because of him. And in fact, if you do want to go listen to his review, he does have a little bit deeper voice. It'll give you an idea of what it could sound like if your voice is a little bit deeper. And quite honestly, watching as many reviews as you can is definitely the best policy when you're thinking about buying a product, whether it's a microphone, camera, or whatever. Watch them all, come to your own conclusion. So with that all being said, yes, I did purchase this microphone with my own money. Fifine did not send it to me. But if they did send it to me, it wouldn't make a difference because I always say my opinion no matter what. And I do want to say, companies like Fifine and Mayano do a really good job of being budget-friendly but still delivering a good sound. Is every product perfect from each of them? No, that wouldn't go that far, but they all do have some decent options. Mayano does have a microphone that's called the PD100 that goes for around $40 to $45. That one does come with like a little bit better of like a desk tripod as well as an XLR cable. So the little bit of price difference makes sense. But what I want to focus on is the most important thing the sound of the microphone. So I actually will be doing a comparison between the Fifine K669D as well as the Mayano PD100. I will also throw a few other microphones into the mix, such as the XM8500 and probably the Rode Pod mic. I mean, I will say I did listen to Bark's review and I liked the sound of the microphone. That's the reason that I purchased it. But I may not like it on my voice. I may not like it on the things that I test. We'll see. A quick side note before we move any further. Today I am using this with the Focusrite Vocaster 1 and I have the gain set at exactly 50%. But since I am kind of eager and excited to just test it out and everything, let's just get into it. If you decide to purchase this $37 dynamic microphone, it will come with a desktop tripod stand. It will come with a hard mount that is attached to the microphone when you open the box, but it is not permanently attached. It will come with a little sheet of documentation as well as the microphone itself, the K669D. The build quality of this microphone is absolutely outstanding. Feels like a $37 little monster. Just like a little, little tough-ass monster. I don't know what I'm doing anymore. Now, when it comes to the desktop tripod stand, it is short. It's not going to give you a lot of play and get the microphone close to your mouth. However, this is fully metal. Yeah, this little tripod that came with a $37 microphone is metal. It's all metal, baby. Once again, though, not the most desirable height. And if you are going to put the microphone on this and actually put it on your desk and you plan on moving literally anything around or typing on your keyboard, it's going to be problems. Problematic. I think the only build quality that I'm not the biggest fan of is actually the hard mount. It's like the most plasticky part of it. But I'd be pretty unreasonable to expect the world from these accessories when already the microphone build is incredible and we're talking about a low price. With this hard mount, there is a 5 8 inch threading on the bottom part and then like right past the 5 8 inch, there's a 3 8 inch threading. So you don't really need a stand adapter with this. However, if you are putting it on something that has a short 3 8 inch threading and then has something that stops it, this won't really work with that, but it's meant more for like the cheaper boom arms that have like the little long part with the 3 8 inch threading on the top. It would have been cool if it came with a windscreen, but some of the cheaper windscreens are kind of bleh anyway. But I'll try to find a windscreen that fits on here well and let you know which one you could get if you think the plosives are bad when we test it. So when it comes to the accessories and the build, I think this is a win. There aren't any features 
per se on this microphone. There's no switches or anything like that. So I think we're good just to move on to the very limited amount of specs that I know about this microphone. As mentioned before, the Five Fine K669D is a dynamic microphone. It has a cardioid polar pattern and it is in fact an XLR microphone. Since it is an inactive dynamic microphone, it does not require phantom power. This has a sensitivity of negative 50 plus or minus 3 dB, as well as a frequency range of 50 hertz to 16 kilohertz. There aren't a ton of specs available for this microphone, but let's just move on to the fun part anyway. Let's get to some testing. Now, since this microphone didn't come with a windscreen, I was gonna do most of my tests without it. However, I did wanna do some with some sort of protection. I tried the Rode windscreen that is probably a little too expensive for this microphone that's $37. I think this is like $25, but this is a little bit big on this microphone. So then I actually tried like a replacement Shure SM7B windscreen. And I mean, technically it fits. It does look a little weird, a little lumpy, but it fits. The best fitting windscreen is actually just more your traditional little bit longer foam windscreen. This is just like an on stage foam windscreen I could link down below. But it seems like this is the one that Five Fine expected people to use with this. I don't know if they're going to come out with their own windscreen or if they have. I don't think they have. But I'll just use this one for a couple tests since it is the least expensive and fits the best. But let's go ahead and start with a proximity effect test. Here is the proximity effect of the K669D. And I'm pretty sure I've been occasionally saying K669D rather than K669D. My bad if I have. Now let's go ahead and do some plosives. Plosive test with some pickled peanutses. 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 Now, if you are a gamer that's looking to buy in this microphone and you're going to be slapping the shit out of your keyboard that has really loud keys on it, this is kind of a worst case scenario with some Cherry MX Blues. But here's how it rejects that sound. But now let's test the polar pattern even more. I'll kind of talk around the microphone, then we'll do a white noise test. Here's the front of the microphone. Now we're going to the side of the microphone. Now we're going to the back of the microphone. Now we're going to the other side of the microphone. And once again, we're at the front. Now for that white noise test. Now I'm gonna get really real here. We're gonna do a test, a super important test. Maybe the most important test of all time. It might just save the damn world. Let's do a kitty purr test. Right now I'm exactly a foot away from the K669D. Now I'm exactly two feet away from the K669D. And now I'm exactly three feet away from the K669D. Now since I'm using the Focusrite Vocaster 1 and it has built-in DSP, instead of using like really expensive plugins and doing a post-processing test, I'm just going to enable the radio setting. Here's how it sounds with the radio setting on the Vocaster 1. Once again, set at 50% gain. It looks like the radio setting has the compression turned mostly the way up, as well as a little bit of a bass boost, a slight mid drop, and then just a little bit of treble. So here's how this sounds with a little bit of DSP on with the Vocaster 1. And now I'm going to take this microphone into a completely reverberant, untreated room and try it out there. Here's the Five Fine K669D in a completely untreated room. Honestly, kind of a worst case scenario recording environment. This is a very reverberant room. I would say it's substantially worse than most like bedroom recording scenarios. And yes, I am actually holding the microphone with the little tripod that came with it. Hopefully the handling noise isn't too bad in this situation. Shouldn't be moving too much or anything, so it should be okay. But now let's move back into the better sounding room. Now, even though this really is meant for podcasting and everything, let's still just do a real quick acoustic and electric guitar test. <laughs>
well, now that we've gotten all the testing out of the way, now let's go ahead and get into a real quick comparison. Before we jump into that comparison, I just wanted to do a quick palate cleanser microphone. This is the Mackie EM89D. It goes for around $20, but I mean, you could put this in the comparison also. So that's kind of why I'm using it as the palate cleanser because it's like somewhat in the comparison now. But let's go ahead and put these six microphones up against each other. Here is the sound of microphone number one in this comparison. Here is the sound of microphone number two in this comparison. Here is the sound of microphone number three in this comparison. Here is the sound of microphone number four in this comparison. Here is the sound of microphone number five in this comparison. Here is the sound of microphone number six in this comparison. Now we have another test for microphone number two in this very repetitive comparison. Now we have another test for microphone number four in this very repetitive comparison. Now we have another test for microphone number six in this very repetitive comparison. Now we have another test for microphone number one in this very repetitive comparison. Now we have another test for microphone number three in this very repetitive comparison. Now we have another test for microphone number five in this very repetitive comparison. This is the last audio test for microphone number two. This is the last audio test for microphone number six. This is the last audio test for microphone number three. This is the last audio test for microphone number five. This is the last audio test for microphone number one. This is the last audio test for microphone number four. Are you ready for the big microphone comparison reveal? <laughs> so exciting. Okay, let's do it. Microphone number one was the Mayano PD100 that goes for around $40 to $45. Microphone number two was the Rode PodMic that goes for around $100. It is by far the beefiest, most hefty microphone out of all of these, but does it sound nearly three times better than the Five Fine because you're nearly paying that much more? Microphone number three was the microphone this whole comparison has been about, the Five Fine K669D. And as you know, this microphone comes in at $37. Microphone number four was the Zoom ZDM1 that goes for $50, so it's a little bit more expensive than the Mayano, but not by much. Microphone number five was the Five Fine K688. It is an XLR and USB dynamic microphone that currently goes for around $80. However, I was using it as an XLR mic. And it has cat hair on it. Who would have guessed? Microphone number six by process of elimination was the Behringer XM8500. It is technically the only handheld dynamic microphone in this comparison, but this $20 microphone is very loved. So I figured I should put it in this comparison about another inexpensive dynamic microphone, even though the style of it is a little different. Well, I went back and listened to this microphone quite a bit, listened to the comparison, and now I feel like I'm ready to give you my opinion of the K669D. Now, as I said earlier, I feel like Five Fine does a good job a majority of the time. They've gradually gotten better and a little bit more consistent. I feel like Five Fine has really helped a lot of beginners get a microphone that actually sounds pretty damn good and is reasonably priced. Now you're obviously not getting the highest quality with these microphones. That's not really what they're meant for. These are budget options, but don't get me wrong. You can do a lot with a budget option, a budget microphone like this. I mean, there are tons of podcasts and YouTube channels and everything out there that use the XM8500. And I'm sure that no one complains about the sound quality. But the one thing to be aware of is if you are thinking about buying the K669D, is that you will need an audio interface. I personally do not recommend the XLR to USB cables. Those are trash. And also an XLR to 3.5 millimeter cable going into a headphone jack or into your phone isn't going to sound great. But you should definitely get something with a decent preamp in it, whether it's an interface or recorder. I do think there are good budget interface options out there now. Getting something like the UMC22 from Behringer or the M-Audio Solo. I mean, if you get one of those and this microphone, you're looking at like $80 to $90 and it's going to sound very good for that price. Looking at it that way, I think this microphone is very impressive. And I would even say that if you are 
like a podcaster that's on the go and you just want a microphone that you know you could throw around a little bit, you're not too worried about it, and the build quality is good, this is a great option for that. I just wanted to jump in really quick and mention a few things that I've found out since filming my review section of the Fifine K669D. And I also wanted to elaborate a little bit more on the blind comparison as well as the microphones that are related to this price category. The really cool thing that I found out about this microphone that I thought was worth mentioning is that it perfectly fits in just your universal condenser microphone shock mount. So if you were thinking about getting this microphone and the fact that it doesn't have a shock mount kind of turns you off, guess what? You can get turned right the hell on and get one of these universal shock mounts. Any universal shock mount that has a screw on bottom, I'm pretty sure this will fit. But the cool thing is this does fit in actually like the clamp version of these shock mounts. And I did mention earlier that the on stage kind of like all ray windscreens that are a little bit longer, not like your classic ball windscreen. The ones that are slightly longer do fit on this perfectly. You can get these very cheap and one thing I will say about this microphone in particular is that the Five Fine compared to the Mayano does have more of a presence boost. Microphone like the Five Fine can sound really good on people like Bark from obscure mics that do have a little bit lower voice. Now I don't think this microphone sounds particularly bad on me but for my voice and to my liking it does have a little too much presence but if you do like the sound of this and you don't want as much of a presence boost you can totally use a windscreen and that can kind of help dull that high end a little bit. The thicker ones from Rode will do a little bit better job of that, but I have no problem just pulling down the high end a little bit in post. And overall, I actually really do like the sound of the K669D. I think it sounds solid. So it is nice that Five Find came out with more of a budget option that does have a different sound to it. So people have the choice, and if they like this, they can go with this. If they like the Mayano better, go with that. And I mean, a lot of people love the XM8500 and love the Zoom ZDM1. Whatever makes you happy, whatever floats your freaking boat, dude, get it. But I think for a lot of people, these budget options are plenty good for what they need to start out with until they eventually upgrade. I say it all the time, but we all have different ears. We all have different voices. We all have different expectations, preferences, biases. All of these things form our opinion, and I'm just giving you mine. But I do think that the Five Fine K669D is a solid option at $37. I can't be mad about it, but I do think that my recommendation is solely for, you know, content creation and podcasting. I don't really think this is a musician's microphone per se. Could you record some stuff that you're just sending to your bandmates and will it sound decent? Yes, but this is not like a studio singing microphone. But the rating system that I use on this channel is the BBSR. It's something that Bark from Obscure Mics and I made up. It's a rating system from 0 to 10 and there are some descriptive words for it so you can check that out. I'll have it up on the screen right now. But the grade that I give the Five Find K669 D is a nine. I think this is a really great budget podcasting microphone that a lot of people could really, really enjoy. And now I'm gonna kick it back to the other guy and let him do the outro. So overall, I'm actually pretty happy with this Five Fine K669D. I appreciate Bark's recommendation over at Obscure Mics. Definitely go check his video out. But thank you all for watching this review of the Five Fine K669D. I hope it helped you out. Help you decide whether you want to get one of these or not. But most of all, I hope you had fun. Stay tuned for a lot more reviews and comparisons and a lot of fun other little stuff. I want to say thank you to every subscriber out there. I really appreciate you. And I want to give the biggest thank you to all of the members out there. <laughs> I just love every damn one of you. You're so, so beautiful. <laughs> but seriously, thank you all for being members. You're the fucking best. <laughs> But once again, thank you all for watching the audio hotline. I'll see you audio nerds.